Hey you guys, it's your girl T, and it's time for a recap of Young and the Ratchet, aka Love and Hip Hop ATL. I know I'm a few days behind it, but as everybody knows, I've been packing up and moving, so I'm in a new location, not on my bed. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get this recap started. So in the opening scene, we have Althea and Jocelyn. Jocelyn's going to go visit Althea in the studio because Althea is now becoming a singer of some sorts. So Althea's in this. So Althea's in the studio singing and Jocelyn walks in. You can tell Jocelyn already has this attitude. She's feeling some type of way. And she's talking about how Stevie J makes her, you know, repeat herself over and over. Makes her do like 15 takes. And Althea's, and Althea's like, well, you know, for me, I can just do it in one take. Benzino don't make me go over and over. I'm really good at what I do. And she's like, well, maybe we should collaborate. And Jocelyn looks at her like, bitch, uh, I think not. You know, it's like Jocelyn gets this attitude and she's talking shit about her in the confessional. I'm starting to realize that Jocelyn is a very insecure woman. You know what I'm saying? It seems like anybody that she feels is pretty or might be some type of competition to her, she throws them a lot of shade. She even starts calling Althea Hothea. Now, that's the shit I don't like, okay? First of all, let's go back to last season. Well, actually, let's go back to the first season. Mimi sat up on her motherfucking pedestal going in on Jocelyn, calling all types of hoes, and, you know, she's a slut and she sleeps with everybody. Jocelyn was very honest about her whole shit, but guess who else is honest about their whole shit? Althea is. So for Jocelyn to try and shame her and call her a hoe, that's almost like the pot calling the kettle black. Jocelyn, you was out here prostituting yourself. You done took somebody else's man. You go both ways. I'm going to need you not to throw so much shade at Althea for being a hoe when you're in the same boat as she is. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next thing we have Kalina and Carly Red and they're going shopping for a mattress. Kalina says she wants a mattress to be in the studio because a lot of people like to sleep in the bed with her. And Carly Red is like, what do you mean a lot of people? She's like, well, you know, my kids, my husband, my side piece female that I'm in love with slash best friend. And Carly's like, what? You go both ways? And Kalina's like, yeah, girl, you know, my girl is light skinned. She got a fat ass. And, you know, Tony's cool with it. At first, we were best friends. And then, you know, I just fell in love with her. I just got really attracted to her. And Carly's like, damn, I've never went both ways. And then at that moment, Carly climbed into the bed and start showing her ass and her cooch and I'm just like Carly needs to sit down somewhere this woman has a nice body and a beautiful face but yet and still she feels like she has to be a tot 24 7 so anyways they're still talking about how her friend is coming into town and they're gonna have a threesome and all this and that and she can't wait and she needs this bed right away so then the dude in the store is looking at them like what the hell is they talking about and what are they doing climbing all over this damn bed that I gotta sell and the way they're climbing and grinding on the bed I hope they purchase that motherfucker I mean the dude's expression was so funny because you could tell what was going on in his mind. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, we have Mimi Foss. And Mimi Foss is going to go meet up with Nico and Don. And Nico is, once again, still looking like a cartoon character with that same dumbass expression on his face. And so they're talking about the whole situation. And Mimi's like, you know, I still have an attitude with him because of the whole situation that went down. Um, Nico is still kicked out of Mimi's house after that whole makeup situation when she found makeup on the collar of his shirt. And, you know, Don is like, well, you know, we need to capitalize on this. This tape is coming out either way. Nico starts talking about making a sex tape part two. So now Mimi's mad. She starts flipping out and cussing him out. She's like, you know what? You are still in the doghouse with me. I'm tired of this shit. You talking about a part two. I'm starting to feel like, you know, you're just trying to use me like I'm some type of porn star. You know, like you're just trying to exploit me. And she just goes flying off the handle. Mimi's emotions are so irrational that I, you can't tell me that this woman is not snorting something. Like she goes from zero to a hundred in less than ten seconds. It's like she's just so over the top. And when she pops off, she really pops off. So she gets mad and she's like, I'm done with this meeting. There's not going to be a part two. I'm tired of this shit. And she walks off. So she walks off. Nico and Don are still sitting there. And Don's like, you know what, Nico? You got to get up on it because this is our money. You need to make sure she's happy because if she's happy, then we're good. And I'm sitting here like, damn, I can't understand how Mimi cannot see through this shit. Nico and Don are straight up opportunists. And they're both at this point in time coming together to use Mimi for all she has. This whole situation is a mess. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, Rashida and Athleta decide to go out to lunch together. And they're going out to talk about, you know, her situation with Benzino. And Rashida tells Alethea or Althea, Hothea, whatever y'all want to call this woman, um, tells her that basically she's not the biggest Benzino fan because of the whole situation that happened with Kirk Benzino in the hot tub. And so um, Althea's like, well, you know what? I got to figure this out. I'm going through a lot right now. You know, I want to be honest with him. I feel like he knows 
something about my past, but he's not saying it. And Rashida tells Alethea or Althea <laughs> that basically she needs to be honest with Benzino and tell Benzino, you know what I'm saying, the truth about her past because everybody knows that, you know, she was out here kind of wild and fucking with everybody, you know, before Benzino finds out and gets mad at her. And Alethea makes a point in her confession to say that she wasn't out here just fucking rappers and, you know, entertainers. She was fucking producers, the business owners, the CEOs. She was fucking like top flight dudes. So she made sure to, to differentiate that as if it really mattered. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, Mimi is in the car with Ariana. We haven't seen Ariana in a minute, and Ariana is looking gorgeous as ever. And Ariana is a real friend to Mimi. She's really concerned about this whole situation with the tape. Mimi's telling her everything, and she's telling Mimi that flat out, Nico is using you, and it's obvious that this dude leaked out this tape. And once again, Mimi's going from zero to 100 in 10 seconds. She starts popping off on Ariana and getting an attitude and saying that she loves Nico, and Nico wouldn't do that to her. I am convinced that Mimi is not only getting high, but this woman also has very low self-esteem. She feels like she needs to have a man, even if it's just a piece of a man, to complete her. No matter how bad that man treats her, no matter how bad that man shits on her, she would rather have a man than be by herself. And you have a lot of women out here like that. And I think that that's sad because Mimi has so much potential. You know what I'm saying? She's been able to run her own successful business. She had a lot going on for herself, but it seems like once she gets caught up with the guy, it ends up throwing her completely off track. So Ariane tells Mimi that she wants to go meet with Nico herself and go talk to Nico. And Mimi's like, you know, whatever, do what you got to do. Moving on to the next scene. The next scene we have Jocelyn and Stevie and they're auditioning dancers for Jocelyn's upcoming tour slash music video. I mean, this woman is so delusional. She's telling these women that, you know, she's the baddest bitch in the game. This record is going to end up nominating her for a Grammy. I'm like, I just love Jocelyn's delusions of grandeur because she thinks so highly of her career. She thinks so highly of herself. And I got to give her props. She got to think highly of herself because nobody else thinks highly of her like that. Besides possibly Stevie J. So they're sitting here interviewing dancers and the girls are coming in and they're dancing and stripping on the pole. And then a big girl comes in and they're like, we wonder what she going to do. And at first she gets down and she's twerking. Then now the sudden big girl gets up on that damn pole, hangs upside down with her arms spread out. I was like, yes, honey, get it. If you can get up there as big as you are, I can't do nothing but give her props because I could barely do that shit as small as I am. You know what I'm saying? Stripper poles are no joke. Like I told you, I took a stripper pole exercise in class and I was just so damn sore and tired. It was insane. It was one of the craziest workouts I've ever had in my life. So I give strippers props. That shit is no joke and that shit is not easy. And as big as she was and she was able to get up there and do all that, I tip my damn hat to her. Moving on to the next scene. So on the next scene, we have Ariana and Nico. Ariana bum rushes Nico out the blue. Nico's being a personal trainer to some real pretty lady. So Ariana's like, you know what, Nico, me and you, we really need to talk about this whole situation um, with you and Mimi because my girl right now is distraught about this sex tape coming out. She's depressed. She's crying. And you seem to be doing good. You don't seem as concerned as she is. And Nico's like, well, yeah, I'm concerned, but I mean, what do you want me to do? It's about to come out. We might as well capitalize on this. And Ariana is basically upset. She can't believe what she's hearing from Nico and how nonchalant he is about the situation. So then once again, Aaron asks Nico flat out, did you leak out that sex tape? Did you send that sex tape over to Vivid? And Nico's like, no, I didn't. You know what I'm saying? And I shouldn't have to explain myself to you. Who are you? You're using Mimi too. You're using Mimi to come up. And Ariana's like, I'm not using Mimi because when Mimi gets into it and she's going through some shit, she has to come to my house to get away from you and Stevie. And I'm just tired of the whole situation. I'm tired of folks playing my girl. So now they're going back and forth. And Nico's like, you know what? It is what it is. I don't got time for this. And Aaron's like, you know what? I'm done with this conversation. And Aaron ends up walking out on Nico and he goes back to training. Oh, girl. Moving on to the next scene. On the next scene, we have Kalina. And basically, she had talked to her husband, Tony, about Ashley coming into town. And Tony said he's cool with it as long as, you know, it's going to be some action in it for him. And that as long as Kalina does not, you know, slack off on work because he needs Kalina to focus on work right now. They're trying to get this, trying to get this album together. And what's funny is that Kalina keeps bragging about how, you know, Ashley's so light skin and she's so in love with Ashley's light skin and her husband, Tony's light skin. And it's going to be a bunch of light skinniness all over her chocolateness. And it makes me feel like maybe she has some, you know, colorism issues because it seems like she's really obsessed with light-skinned people which to me makes absolutely no sense why she kept bringing up the whole skin tone thing in regards to her husband and her so-called girlfriend, okay? So in the next scene, she goes to go get Ashley. Now, she done did all this bragging about Ashley having a fat ass, a beautiful face. I'm seriously thinking that Ashley's gonna be a cross between Rihanna and Beyonce, okay? We see Ashley in the car, and Ashley looks plain as hell. She's on her hood rat shit. She ends up stopping at a red light, 
puts the car in park, and then she begins twerking out the window. She's basically acting like a hood rat right now. And I'm like, how old are these women? Who stops at a red light to start twerking? You know what I'm saying? I mean, she was just came, she just came off to me as ratchet. The, I just saw just a regular chick, but it is what it is. So now they get over to the house, and Tony's there. They have dinner all set up, and they're eating and everything. And, you know, t I don't understand what's going on with Tony's beard. Like, his beard looked like somebody just painted this shit on. I mean, I know dudes use Beijing, but some of these guys are getting really crazy with the Beijing. You're just supposed to use it to kind of, you know, dye your beard and, you know, for, like, little touch-ups. You don't use this shit to just draw the beard on. It's like you can clearly see his Beijing. I don't know, but his damn beard was creeping me out the whole damn time during dinner. So now they're talking and, you know, Kalina and Ashley are kissing on each other and you can tell they're ready to go. Kalina's ready to go, go off with Ashley and go get ate out or, you know, go eat her ass out. I don't know. So Kalina's ready to go do her thing and Tony's like, okay, well, hold up now. Uh, how are we going to do the sleeping arrangements? Because Kalina brought it to my attention. We had a conversation that we were all going to be in the same bed. Ashley looked at Kalina like, Harpo, who this man? <laughs> I was cracking up. Ashley's whole face turned up like, bitch, I don't know what the hell Kalina told you, but this don't got nothing to do with you, Tony. This is between me and Kalina. Ashley was not having that. She wasn't trying to put on no show for Tony, and she damn sure looked like she wasn't going to let Tony hit anything. So Tony looks stupid and salty right now, and Kalina's just sitting there like, mm-hmm. You know, like she didn't just tell her husband that she was going to allow him to come into the bedroom with them. So I just found the whole situation funny. A lot of dudes were like, you know what, Tony's a punk. How the hell he going to walk off and let his woman just, you know, mess with somebody else? My thing is, the reason why Tony was that calm and he didn't care about his wife going to go sleep with her best friend is because they're in a sham marriage. Because nobody in a real loving marriage who cares about that person is going to allow their significant other to sleep with other people. When people have open relationships and open marriages like that, that's because they're doing it too. If y'all are really seriously thinking that Tony sat there and did them dishes and cleaned up the kitchen, you guys are stupid. While she was getting her damn cat ate out upstairs, Tony was driving to his other bitch's house. Or maybe his other guy's house. You know how it is in the ATL. He was driving over to somebody else's house, be it a man or a woman, to go get his rocks off. You know what I'm saying? Who the hell is going to sit there and allow their significant other to be sitting here busting nuts and doing them and having a good old funky time in their bedroom, but then they sitting downstairs doing dishes? If y'all think that that man sat down there and cleaned up that kitchen, y'all are sadly mistaken. Tony got up in his car and he went to go find him some ass. Literally. Okay? Moving on to the next scene. So the next scene we have Althea and Benzino and... Althea has it real, real sexy. She has the candles lit, the fireplaces going, and everything else. And Benzino actually looked kind of cute in this scene. So Benzino gets down to the ground, and they're sitting there, and they're getting ready to start talking. And Althea starts having an attitude with him like he did something wrong. And she's like, you need to be open and honest with me. You need to let me know what you heard about me, because I feel like Jocelyn is trying to hold stuff over my head. And I feel like, you know, you and Stevie J have some type of inside joke. And Benzino's like, where the hell is all this coming from? What are you talking about? And Althea's like, well, you know, um, a while back when you came to Stevie J's house and you saw me at Stevie J's house, I'm not going to lie to you, but I had sex with Stevie J. And Benzino's like, bitch, what the fuck is you telling me this shit for? And she's like, well, you know, I know that's your friend and everything. I just feel like you needed to know. I wanted you to hear from me first before you heard it out on the street. And Benzino knows damn well that Stevie J was smashing Alita or Althea or Hothea. You know what I'm saying? Benzino knew, but Benzino didn't care. He's one of them fall in love fast ass dudes. So he doesn't care. And my thing is, he felt some type of way because he felt like, okay, obvious I knew that, but I don't want to think about it. I don't care. You know, so for you to bring it up to me is just crazy. You know, that whole situation was just really, really insane. And then for them to try and play it off like they didn't know each other, Stevie J and Althea, when the season first began, was just shady as hell. And you can tell this whole situation is about to backfire in everybody's face. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, we have Benzino. The music is sad and it's real dramatic. The, the scene is really dimly lit. And Benzino is crying. He said he just got a call from Boston that his mother just passed away and that he needs to rush out there. And he's driving in the car. He's doing this monologue. And he's just going through a lot. And then after that, in the next scene, we see Stevie J. And Stevie J is running down the steps in slow motion with his suitcase in hand. And he gets downstairs and, and you know, uh, Jocelyn is coming at the same time. She's like, sweetie, what's going on? Where are you going? And she's like... And Stevie J's like, my boy's mom just died. You know, Benzino's going through a lot. I have to go out to Boston and go be with him because he's having a lot of family issues. You know, this whole scene was so scripted. It was sad. It was really sad. So last week, 
We all heard Stevie J in the museum talk about don't Solange me, even though the whole Jay-Z and Solange situation happened way after this show is supposedly recorded. And it's funny that they're trying to basically spin the whole family dynamic during the show. If this was happening during the show, how does Stevie J know the whole family dynamic and, you know, blood and money shit and mix and all this other stuff? This was all information that we were learning after the shooting. So it's obvious that Mona and the Love and Hip Hop producers went back and re-recorded scenes so that way they could fill out the storyline. This whole episode this week was just so scripted, it annoyed the hell out of me. You know, I know it's fake, I know it's scripted TV, but I like it to be somewhat in chronological order. And when they can't even get the shit chronologically right, I have an issue with that. To the point now where this show is just going on a downward spiral and they keep trying to spin it off like it's all reality when we know that it's not, they might as well just write a full script for this and let this be scripted. You know, everything from even when Kirk and Rashida were in the bed, you know, making out, then all of a sudden Rashida has her mask there and she picks up her mask and she puts it on her face and she has on a face with makeup, her hair's done. Everything is just so fake and scripted on this show. It's starting to be nauseating. So anyways, go ahead and leave a comment. Those are my thoughts for this week's recap. I'm loving hip hop ATL, aka the young and the ratchet honey. So go ahead, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. If you're not following me, make sure you follow me. I am at lovely T on Twitter. I will be live tweeting this Monday. I'm um, doing the regular episode. I wasn't able to live tweet this past Monday because we were busy packing up and moving. So go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. All right, deuces.